What's up, everybody? That actually timed really nicely with the end of that song. So maybe we're going to start doing some music at the beginning of these. Um, something people have asked for before, but I'm glad we were just able to test it out. So if you can hear me and if you can see me, definitely let me know in the chat. That would be awesome to get a sense if this is working or not. What's up, Dario? Thank you, everybody. All right. So we're going to go ahead and jump in. This is the first time that we've run this webinar. So we're really trying to provide a bit more education around things that are specific to different features with an abstract or different workflows, or in this situation, more specifically focused on how we use collections, share work from abstract, collaborate with our PMs, engineer stakeholders, um, provide them access to inspect, things like that. So we're going to start trying out like a couple different 45 minute webinars. It seems like we got pretty good attendance so far. We got 67 people on this, which is really cool. So I'll go ahead and jump in uh, since it's 9.05 and I think everybody's here. But in case you haven't joined these webinars before, my name's Alden. I'm Abstract's lead design advocate and I've been here since January 2018. Uh, previously of another design tool called Wake, uh, which is slowly fading out, unfortunately. But it's been like an amazing year here at Abstract and we've been able to change so much about the product and consistently impressed how quickly it's able to move. So there's always something new to learn. Um, in this situation, we're gonna take advantage of collections and reviews in Abstract. Um, feel free to reach out on Twitter. If you have any questions after this, definitely follow up. Um, as well as if you came prepared with any questions or if you have them as we go through things, there's a little Q&A section of Zoom. I'm going to be monitoring that as we go through uh, the webinar. And yeah, thanks for joining. We're also running another session on the 20th, I think, um, tied more closely to inspect and assets and things like that. So um, that will be pretty cool as well if you want to join that one. All right, so main sections for this session. Also, after we get through this, or as we go through it, we'd love to hear any feedback um, as it is the first time that we've run this one. Uh, so I'm doing a little bit of winging it here, but main things that I wanted to cover, how we leave feedback in abstract, where we do that, how to take advantage of collections in different situations, as well as how to tie them to review requests. Um, I'll go ahead and, and dive in, but in abstract there are a ton of different areas where we can leave feedback, a lot of different text fields, a lot of different things supporting Markdown. We've got activity sections, comments and annotations and collections, comments and annotations on layers. Um, the most important thing that I want to cover first is signaling to other people when it's appropriate to leave feedback. Uh, oftentimes when people are starting with abstract, it's a bit more, our work is a bit more exposed, um, or at least it's surfaced more visibly to the rest of the team, which Sometimes a transition that we're making for the first time and maybe we're in the position where we might not want people to leave feedback on our work or we want to encourage it. So one really easy way to provide an indicator um, of when it's appropriate is to take advantage of branch status labels. Uh, work in progress and open for feedback as well as in review uh, are all status labels that we offer for branches. Also in this session, making the assumption that folks already understand what branches are, um, understand what master is, kind of the basic structure of the product and things like that. So if you aren't totally familiar with it, definitely keep an eye out for our one-on-one -on -one session. Um, it's also available on our Vimeo, which was this webinar will also be available on. So uh, branch status labels are really like the first way that we provide indicators of when it is appropriate to leave feedback on something. Um, and is really like the first aspect of context um, around the work that we're doing. So a couple other different ways that people do this as well. Um, internally, we actually use emojis to prefix our branch names. So in addition to the work in progress status label being applied to a branch, sometimes we also add a palm tree emoji or something like that if it's explore, exploration um, or something that isn't directly tied to the roadmap. I think if I actually jump into our internal instance of abstract, you can kind of see some couple of advantage, uh, examples of that. So Pine's working on some things, Sarah's working on some things, Jordan working on some stuff. 
all open for feedback. Um, I think we're switching from the palm tree to this flower for exploration, but um, that really is just also to let me know that this branch is exploration. So um, a couple of things to take advantage of when I'm actually applying a branch status label. It is located at the very top here. I haven't set this to any status. Work in progress, I see most people using as like, kind of heads down on this, just need to get through some more, you know, explorations for myself. Um, if I apply work in progress, folks on my team, uh, not going to typically jump in there uh, unless I specifically switch it to open for feedback, in which case I'm open to the suggestions of the team, PMs, engineers, et cetera. So that's really like the first place that we are providing context uh, for the work that we're doing on a branch. Right now, those are predetermined. They're not things that we can customize. Um, in the future, that's something we want to open up. Definitely a nice to have that is taking a little bit of a backseat on the roadmap, but a place we're headed towards in terms of branch statuses. All right, so I'll jump back into my collection here. So once we've, you know, open our branch up for feedback and kind of decided that we're at a place where we're ready to solicit the opinions of others, whether there are design peers, engineers, PMs, a um, couple different ways that we can actually leave feedback or those stakeholders can leave feedback. Um, three primary ways would be comments, annotations, as well as as part of a review request. So I'll go through all those right now. Effectively, you can leave comments within a collection or in the layer detail view. I'll walk through the layer detail later in the collection as well, but um, comments with an abstract, pretty straightforward. If there's any artboard or specific mock that I'm looking at or a screen that I want to leave some feedback on, we have a couple different options here. Um, the first of them being comments. All comments support markdown. So if I want to say, um, let's say, pat myself on the back, talk about myself in the third person and say, Alden, you're doing a great job on this webinar. Actually, I think there's a couple different tooltips here as well. So Markdown supported. If we want to add links or GIFs or images into these fields, we totally can. Let me just actually add another one here. So any comments, we're really applying them to the entirety of, of the mark or the artboard. Um, threaded comments if we need to reply directly to someone. Comments also support, you know, tags and app mentions, uh, other users within the organization. So if I were to shout out uh, Dana in this comment, she would get a notification um, through the application, maybe a pop-up if she has them enabled, as well as I believe an email notification if she has those turned on as well. So I'm not gonna send her that, it's still pretty early in the morning. Um, one thing that we are going to roll out as well is actually emoji reactions. So. This is something that we're going to be launching with Abstract 78. So hold on tight. A little bit of a sneak preview, but I do see a lot of people requesting ways to mark comments as resolved. Um, one place we're headed towards as well. In the meantime, what a lot of folks have been doing is using Mojo Reactions as kind of a hacky way to accomplish that. So comments are preserved across the history of an artboard. Um, if we are Let's say I can pull up an example in maybe one of our older branches. So we've got an artboard here for people badges. A lot of different comments have been left on this, a lot of different feedback happening internally. Any comment that I make on this is tied directly to that artboard at that point in time. Uh, meaning that as we've evolved this artboard and exploration over the last six months, the feedback, decision-making, contextual comments have all been preserved. Um, if I need to navigate to a previous commit to view that content in context um, or tie it directly back to an annotation, really nice to be able to preserve and track the feedback that's been left as well as whether or not it's been accounted for today. Um, this kind of stuff is often really helpful for folks that are onboarding or just getting started or jumping into the conversation. So the fact that we're kind of preserving this over the entire progression of a design, uh, I think is definitely really important. 
Um, and as far as motion reactions go, if something's been addressed, that's going to be the most immediate solution to marking something is resolved um, and a bit of a hack around in the meantime. So comments on annotations uh, or comments on layers uh, are populated in the layer. If this artboard is part of a collection, that feedback is also going to be populated in the layer detail as well. All right, so get back to my collection here. Collections in my Mac app are actually a little bit different in terms of where we're headed, so might be a couple spoilers when I'm navigating around. All right, comments, really straightforward. Leave feedback, use Markdown, tag people, uh, reply directly in line. Comments are preserved across the entire history of an artboard. Um, annotations, a little bit more location specific. If we need to call out a specific area of a design or uh, maybe we notice the button padding or something like that is off on a mock that we built. Same thing as a comment, except it ties directly to an area. So let's say I make an annotation. Maybe I don't think I messed anything up on this slide at all, but let's say um, the screenshot, for example, uh, maybe we want to, can we? We send this out with another product shot. I'm just going to go ahead and drop that comment in there. Um, I believe in the layer detail of that artboard, um, we'll also see that feedback I left in the collection. So um, if we want to toggle the visibility of annotations, maybe we have something on our board or a screen that we're working on that's really um, marked up with a ton of different feedback and annotations all over it. We can toggle that visibility on and off. If we get a notification for an annotation and um, we're brought to that specific annotation, it will automatically select, let us know the layer that we're looking at. Um, there is a quick shortcut for annotations when we're looking at an artboard. It's just the shortcut A. Um, if I click A, it's going to bring me into leaving a comment um, specifically on that artboard. So if I'm getting a link to this layer and somebody's sharing it out with me, I'm going to be brought to the web app where if I'm a contributor or a viewer on a free seat, I can just leave comments and annotations. Today in abstract, I do need to be a part of the organization um, and sign up with a username and an email. So public linking, something in the future. All right. Cool. Should we go back to that? Jump it around. And I'm just going to keep bouncing between the deck here and the actual product because I want to show some of these things off. So comments and annotations, review, reviews would be the kind of third area to provide some sort of contextual feedback. Um, when somebody sets a branch to be in review, um, we do have the ability to approve that branch or request changes to it. Um, if we're we don't need to leave you know, feedback in there, but there is a text field. So when we're speaking on a review request, we're really talking about the branch as, a, as an entirety. Um, if we are leaving more specific feedback on a, on a layer or an area of that, comments and annotations are still going to be our best practice there. Um, if we are setting a branch to be in review, any contributors can review that branch. Um, you don't need to be edited as a reviewer necessarily. So in the situation where Jordan on our team is working on some updates to collections, he puts his branch into review. If I'm a contributor in that organization, I can approve it or request changes to it, and provide context alongside of that. Additionally, Jordan can add specific folks, PMs, design peers, engineers that are going to be working on this as reviewers. Um, this is going to provide them with the notification um, in the Mac, the web app, and I believe an email as well, uh, letting them know that they've been added as a reviewer. So I'll go through where we manage those things a little bit later on and talk about those text fields. Um, but reviews pretty much is the kind of third area for stakeholders to provide feedback along with directly on the artboard or in the context of a collection. All right, so layer detail, a um, couple different things for designers as well as stakeholders to, to take advantage of. So if we have a, let's actually 
goes out of this. If I'm looking at a layer here, um, on the left-hand side, there's three main tabs of layer detail, comic, compare, and inspect. Um, if I am looking at this layer here, what I'm seeing on the left is actually the commit history of changes that I made to the layer. Um, whatever those changes are, contextualized to the left-hand side, I can go through these, check out what things previously looked like when we were using GT American Mono. Um, if I want to compare previous versions side by side, that's kind of where the compare tab comes in. Um, within the compare tab, there's also an overlay function, meaning that what has changed is going to be visibly pointed out. Sometimes it gets a little bit crazy, but if I'm looking at these things side by side and I really am not able to tell the difference um, for whatever reason, that's going to be the best way to kind of point out some of those small granular changes that have been made to the artboard. All right, before I get into inspect, I'm just going to jump over back to the deck before I go too far ahead of myself. But layer detail, comment, compare, and inspect, um, really straightforward. So when we get a link directly to a layer, we're brought to the layer detail um, with those three tabs accessible to us. So stakeholders are provided with the history of that artboard, every change that's been made to it, as well as all the feedback and comments that have been made to it. Um, the compare tab is going to allow them to visualize those changes side by side or in an overlay window, and inspect is going to diff changes to the file structure, present the layer tree, allow people to spec things out, grab measurements, um, styles, let us know what textiles are being used, um, typefaces, colors, can go more deeply to that in, in just a moment. So. All right, there are a couple questions, so I just want to take a pause before I move on and make sure that reading through, through those. Um, Jack asks, if you've never used collections at all, what is the best project or way to get started? So depending on where we're coming from, um, everything in abstract can be added into a collection as part of a sketch file, and it's an artboard, or it's a component that's kind of floating out there. We can add those things into a collection, typically, if I've never used a collection before, um, a great opportunity would be able to tie it, tie it to a review request or try and collect feedback with it. So to add something to a collection, which kind of goes into this next section here, collections, um, but effectively a collection is just a way to group the contents of a sketch file and share those things out without a viewer needing to pay access for Envision or, or Zeppelin or even Sketch, for example. Um, so it's really just the groupings of the contents of a sketch file, either to share a flow or a couple different screens. Um, if we're at a point where we need to surface something to the rest of our team, um, or there are going to be people reviewing our branch, our collections are a really good way to drive focus for those folks. Um, if we're added as reviewers and we're just joining a branch and getting a notification, there's a lot of noise. There might be large files, tons of things to navigate around, but if I, were, if I were you, Jack, and I'm looking to solicit feedback from a couple different people in abstract, creating a collection, adding a couple artboards to it, and sharing that with them would probably be the best way to get started. Really flexible feature and a ton of different ways that we can use it and take advantage of it. Um, but getting people in the habit of leaving feedback directly on those screens that are pulled from the file um, is usually the, the kind of like the, the trigger point where instead of linking them to the layer or linking them to the file or the branch or something like that, um, we're usually presented with an opportunity to create a collection at that point. All right, thanks for the question, Jack. Much appreciated. Anonymous attendee asks, uh, have you collected before? Notice when I make an annotation and update the artboard, the annotation is kind of harder to find and see since it's part of the previous commit. Anyway, I can preserve the annotation so it's always not grayed out. So when we do leave feedback on an artboard, um, it is tied specifically to that commit, like I mentioned. Um, so if I go back to that example we had in the app of, I believe it was one of Jordan's branches for people badges. So right now there are no kind of like sticky comments or annotations on there um, because of the way that we've chosen to, to productize this, comments and feedback are tied specifically to an artboard at a point in time. Um, if we want to scan this, we are playing around with a couple different ideas to make things a little bit more visible, but right now, previous feedback, if we've either 
updated that artboard or changed the way that it's visually represented, um, we are going to, you know, create a new field for leading comments specifically at that point in time. Um, if we navigate to that, it's going to bring us specifically to the artboard the way that it existed when that feedback was left. Um, so typically when we are leading feedback, we're really speaking to an artboard at a specific point in time. Um, if there is greater context kind of around that, that we would like to be persistent, um, I think the branch summary would be a really good place for it or the collection description um, might kind of accomplish something similar, but uh, I'll talk about those things in just a moment as well. Uh, but good question, uh, anonymous attendee. Cool. Um, Zachary Price asks, is there a way to allow guest access to a collection without giving them access to the entire project? Today, at this instant, no. In the future, yes. Um, we are working on public share links in the background here. Um, one of the things that you can't control when you share a layer in the future is whether or not you want them to have access to all versions. Um, being able to limit specifically the screen that you're sending out um, as it exists, as you're sending it. So um, something that we're working on in the future, internal beta right now, but uh, that will be coming out relatively shortly, Zach. Uh, good question and definitely you know, something we're thinking about. Nams Intendi also asks, um, plans to provide the ability of re-reviewing a, a branch um, I'll get into review request in a second, um, but yes, you can uh, re-review a branch. You just won't get a second notification today. All right. So we've got a couple other questions. I'm going to stop with Stuart's just so I can make sure to get through this with the time that we have slotted. Um, Ash asks, notice on one of your screens there was a comment about a bad merge. How do we avoid work around this? Um, merging, something we cover in other sessions, but uh, in a situation where we make some unintended change, we merge it up to master, we can just restore it to a previous commit. Um, just because I'm already talking about it, I'll show you what that looks like. But on master, in the commits, let's say that this is a bad merge. We want to roll it back, navigate to the previous commit, or merge to master. You can do this on the branch or the master level, restore to that point in time. Okay. So I'm not going to go too, more, too much more deeply on that aspect, but thank you for surfacing it, Ash. And the last one I'm going to touch on before I move on, these collections are a curated subset of artboards. Being able to request reviews for collections would be more useful than for a whole branch. I totally understand that. Um, I think when we're requesting review, uh, I can provide a couple different ways that, that most people are doing it today. So good question, Stuart. I'll make sure to touch on it. All right. So, Collections, really flexible way to, you know, group different artboards together. Let's get into my collection. All right, maybe I broke something. Let me see really quick. Refresh the app. For anybody that doesn't know, Command R just refreshes the Mac app. And is my internet working? Super fun. I'm just going to bounce over to the web app really quick. Sorry about that, folks. I'm like down in our kind of basement webinar room that I have set up right now. So it looks like our office internet has kicked the bucket. Okay. We're back. We're back. We're live. Cool. Um, Collections, best practice, tie them to a specific review or a specific branch. Typically, like I've also seen people create collections for different phases of build. Um, so if we are working on a new feature, we know that there are going to be certain deliverables we're going to be able to make into specific releases, creating separate collections for what those requirements are going to be and what's actually going to make it in the product. Um, right now, the way the collections exist today is that when we merge a branch, the collection goes with that branch into the archive. Um, this is a feature that we are doing a big overhaul on on the background, in the background, um, and actually surfacing to the project level as opposed to the branch level. That's going to open up a ton of possibilities to create collections out of multiple branches or possibly allow multiple people to um, contribute to a single collection as well. So 
So collections, flexible way to group the work, share it out, provide comments, annotations, get feedback, but also collection serves a direct link to inspect. Um, and I'll talk about uh, updating collections in a bit, but I think we talked about this a second ago. Great opportunity to tie collections to review requests. So when we submit a request to review for a branch, um, where people are brought to and where they're notified to be brought to is the branch overview. If there's not a collection there, then we're looking at a lot of files and a lot of changes over you know, a week or two that we've been editing these files. Um, best practice for reviews, I'll pull up like a nice healthy one here. Actually, if you didn't use this, or you're not using this tab already, organization overview, reviews, you can filter this by project. Great place for PMs or stakeholders to pop into the web app or the Mac app um, and kind of see what reviews they're assigned to and actually manage those, um, check in on updates, things like that. So when I'm added as a reviewer to a branch, whether I'm non Tim, Tom, Josh, or Ben, this is where I'm brought to. I'm brought to the branch overview, either in the Mac or the web app. Um, in the situation where there's not a collection, I'm really looking at changed files, I'm looking at the commits, I'm looking at every change that Pine's made here over the last couple months. Um, if there's no context provided in the summary, I might not have a great sense of what the intent or what the scope of this work is. Branch summary is part of review, super important for providing context at a high level, linking to user research, external documentation, Jira tickets, whatever it is. Um, and when we create collections for specific purposes, uh, we're able to say to these folks when they're brought here, here's a set of screens, here's some context around those screens. This is really what we should be focusing on and paying attention to and reviewing. So this collection here, four different screens, when Payam, Tom, Ben, and Nan are brought to this branch overview, this is what they're gonna dive into. Um, collections are something that we create. Um, in the example where I have a branch open, I'm working on another webinar for the future. I've been editing some of these files. I'm, that's the wrong one. Let's talk about design developer handoff. To create a collection, I'm going to be looking at a specific set of artboards. I can select one of these. I can grab the entire page, multi-select. What's also um, something to mention, in terms of the order that artboards appear within abstract, same as the layer tree, top down. So when I'm actually building this final and sketch um, to save myself some like rearranging uh, when we create a collection, I just want to make sure that my layers are in the order of that specific flow. And that's gonna make it really easy for me. So on the files tab on my branch or on master, um, multi-select or grab a couple different screens, add a collection, say, Signed up handoff. If there's any sort of description or additional context, maybe it's context that's not as much on the branch, but this specific collection, this description is going to be paired with the collection when it's presented, when you're looking at the overview of it. So great thing to have in there. So let's just add in test. So we say, you can just kind of see where that shows up. Cool. So 22 items have been added to this collection. Anything I add to that description is going to appear above the, you know, flow here. A little bit of a teaser in some future webinars, but um, that's just kind of the flow of creating a collection. So pretty quick, grab what I need, toss it into a collection. When I look at the branch, it's going to be surfaced on that branch overview automatically. And what's also really cool about these is that they update. Um, so if I ever change these artboards or change my mocks, I'm not spending a bunch of time rebuilding PowerPoint decks or re-pushing um, assets and PNGs just to update uh, the deck that I'm going to be reviewing consistently. So auto update, I can turn that on and off. If it's the latest, it'll default to auto update. If I'm pulling something out of the history, it'll automatically, automatically be disabled. All right. So let me get back into the actual deck for the webinar that we're running now. Cool. All right. So Ruby leaf feedback, layer detail, collections, reviews. Last kind of place that would leave feedback as, as part of a, uh, the activity feed. 
So there's activity feeds for the project as well as the branch in the organization. Um, the activity feed automatically populates with changes that have been made to that branch or project or organization. Um, it's really like a running stream of updates. We can let people know about things or at mention them if we're talking about you know, the entirety of a branch, not necessarily a specific screen in the activity section. Um, something that I see less people taking advantage of, but the activity feed really just speaks to updates, dropping comments in there if we want to speak to the entirety of the branch. All right, I know we've talked about collections a bunch already, but um, when we should use them and how we should use them. If we have explorations to share, we want to present a flow for a design critique, um, we're working on something over the next three weeks that we just want to toss a deck together so that every time we walk into our critique or review session, it's up to date um, and we can present it, collect feedback on it. One thing that I really enjoy about how we're using these collections internally is if we are presenting a critique or review session, um, small things like padding or textiles or font sizes, things that we don't necessarily need to derail the conversation with. We pull our collection up at the beginning of the session. It's up to date with the screens that we want to share. Um, folks that notice something being off in the background as we're kind of talking about the larger goals in the future are able to you know, mark up leave specific annotations of the file that we can then account for. Um, I really like the way that pairing collections with an existing critique doesn't necessarily distract from the collection or the presentation. Um, having those uh, granular bits of feedback preserved alongside the artboard so that when we go back to edit it, we can take that feedback into account um, and not distract from the conversation. It's been a really nice way to pair those things together. Okay, so. Another thing that we can take advantage of with collections is actually adding an artboard from different points in time into a collection. You can add the same artboard into a collection as many times as you want. Um, and if you've changed it and you've evolved it, um, you can actually present that collection as part of a progression, which is really nice. Cool. So we can rearrange collections. If I need to reorder a couple things, um, not from the presentation view, but from the app, really easy, click and drag, a little bit of a slider down here if I need to have a little higher of a view. Um, but keep in mind when we add collections from the files view, that's the order that they're gonna pop into. So if we have good file hygiene and our layers are ordered properly in the flow that you want them to be displayed in, you can just toss them all into a collection without doing too much rearranging. Cool, cool. And then we covered updating collections, um, but auto update is really just saving people a ton of time for rebuilding decks and updating PNGs in presentations. So in the situation where we're working on a branch and we're gonna be reviewing this weekly, um, creating a collection that contains the artboards or screens we're working on, knowing that each design review is gonna be up to date, um, saves a, a bit of time and prep for, for those meetings. Um, internally, like we, we share out those collections um, and the entire team can, you know, pull them up, we feedback on them as we're actually going through the review session. All right, so a couple questions. Um, first one, I'm going through the Q&A section, by the way, but anonymous attendee, re-reviewing a branch. I'm going to get to that in this next section. Uh, Dario asks, the collections what are you using to put together and present the slides? Yes, uh, collections have a presentation mode. So whenever I show this link out, people are brought to this collection, we click into it, presentation mode that I can show these slides and present from, um, little day mode and night mode here with a shortcut, as well as access to comments that have happened on this layer specifically at this point in time, and then link to uh, be able to inspect this artboard. That's how I, we actually present all the webinars from collections uh, as well. So really nice something to be able to pull up um, and just easily present from during your critique. All right. Right now there isn't hot spotting between collections. So something that we're thinking about, I think like the natural step would bring in sketch prototypes, um, be able to display those and present them from abstract, but 
we are thinking about kind of hot spotting areas on a collection as well. So let's say maybe there's an action over here that I want to bounce me to the next slide instead of zoom in, something that we're playing around with. So it would probably be pretty basic when we roll it out, but it might be nice just to sew, you know, a couple different flows. Most likely situation is we bring in, you know, uh, existing sketch native prototypes. Yeah, no worries, Dario. Appreciate it. Anonymous attendee, uh, uh, Maria uh, asks, will design dev and handoff collection disappear when you commit the branch? Um, so right now, I mentioned this a little bit ago, but collections are tied to a branch. So when we merge the branch, the collection goes into the archive with the branch. Um, in the future, what I'm kind of teasing out here is the ability for collections to live at the project level. So as opposed to being tied directly to a branch, we have this nice collections overview of every collection that's in the project. Um, extending the longevity of collections, that's kind of like the next phase of where we're heading with it. So I don't want to spoil too much by going into that, um, but I think it directly speaks to uh, Rudy's question there. So Zachary asks, can you repeat what you said regarding the ordering of layers and collections when we are looking at a file? The order in which artboards appear is based on the order that they sit in the layer tree on that file. Um, so these artboards appear in the order that they're listed on the left hand side um, within that page. So when we are creating a collection, we want to make sure that we can just grab something quickly and not have to rearrange things. Uh, if our sketch file is in order, then we can just really quickly grab the things we need. So uh, thanks for the question, Zachary. Hopefully that makes sense. All right. Um, I'm going to answer Marco's question and Bruno's and then move into review requests with the time we've got left here. So what happens when you rearrange slides in your collection and then update the design of the sketch? Does auto-update rearrange the default? No, it does not. It stays with the preference that you've arranged your artboard. Um, so if we arrange a collection and things auto-update, it's not going to change the order of the collection. Bruno asks, might have missed it, but is every reviewer ready to log into Abstract? They do, but it's a name and an email and it's a free seat. So we are working on public linkings um, and things like that to allow people that don't necessarily have a seat with an Abstract to be able to leave feedback. All right, so review requests. I've been working on a branch. I can manage reviewers that are assigned, reviews that are assigned to me. Let's take a look at the marketing project actually. Oh, nothing in there. Um, so for reviews that have, branches that have been assigned to be in review, um, the flow there is to request a review on your branch. I'll go through that really quickly. But in the Mac app, let's say that I'm working on, you know, um, an exploration um, that is for, Maybe like, actually let's do some like in uh, onboarding explorations or something like that. So I've created a branch. If I need to request a review, top right button, add whoever I need. Let's say it's Dana. Let's say it's Morgan uh, and maybe Jordan or something like that. So when I add these people to review the work that's been done on this branch, they get a notification. They're brought to the branch overview. When they click that notification, I just do the admin email. Um, but right now, they need to be people that are have a seat with an abstract. Whether it's a free seat or a paid seat, doesn't matter. Um, when I request that review, they're going to be able to come in here and actually leave feedback on it and approve a request changes be made to the branch. So that field looks like this. So Jordan is working on a force update flow. Tom's been reviewing and approving it. If I'm approving it, I have the ability to write remarks on the entirety of the branch here. Um, when I'm brought to this branch, I notice that there's a collection. So instead of paying attention to all four files that Jordan has changed and trying to sift through all that information, um, the collection is really what provides quick context and feedback there, um, or at least drives focus for the review. So collections and reviews pair up really nicely when we are leaving feedback on an individual layer best to do so through the collection or on the individual artboard. 
if I'm talking about the branch as a whole, it may be like, you know, is a force up, app update, you know, something that we really want to add to the product, um, maybe request changes and start a discussion around the larger scope of the branch. Review request is a great place for that kind of a feedback. All right, so I'm not going to quite review that one, but I am going to jump into reviews. Cool. So to request a review, like I just showed you guys in the product, um, it's in the top right. We want to make sure to provide folks with context when they're jumping into the application, um, as opposed to leaving them without a collection and without a bridge. <clears throat> without a collection and without a branch summary. So when we add somebody as a reviewer, they're brought to the branch overview. If there's just a bunch of files there, we want to be good peers and provide them with context to go off of. So branch summary, really good spot for links to research, links to tickets, things like that. The branch summary is also searchable if we ever need to find that branch again in the archive. So any ticket IDs or things like that that are added to the branch summary, something that we can search for when we're looking at active branches or archived branches. So really easy to request a review, provide the context that you need, anything that helps them more effectively make their decision on whether or not this branch is appropriate to approve or request changes on. They can you know, solicit changes, they don't need to have a paid seat with an abstract, um, they can be free users, and I think pairing this up with existing design critiques adds a really nice level of transparency on when we have the clear sign of approval to actually affect the source of truth. Um, another thing that's really great is we're tying this feedback and confirmation directly to the files and directly to the work that's being done, as opposed to another system. If we're using abstract, our files in abstract, our version control is based in abstract, inspect, assets, all these things are right there alongside the file. So when we're looking at a branch and we need to know the status of something or who approved it, when it was merged, all that sort of context pairs really nicely with an existing critique. Um, if we're surfacing some work to a group of our peers or engineers or stakeholders, adding those folks as reviewers is one of the best way to notify them that the branch is getting close, allow them to provide contextualized feedback and document their changes that they would like to see made or approval, um, as well as you know, having that accountability and something that we referenced instead of hoping that somebody was taking notes for next steps during the meeting, adding those notes in as part of the request changes um, before the branch has been approved uh, will populate within the activity feed and allow us with a clear end, to have a clear indicator of who requested changes, when they did, what those changes were, um, and then we can go ahead and continue to act and develop on it. So if the branch has been changed from the point where somebody requests changes, it's a question that came up previously. Um, those folks are not going to get a notification today, but they do have the ability to re-review the branch. Um, so let's say that Tom requested some changes to my branch, or maybe uh, Tim requested changes to Pime's branch in this screenshot here. Um, when Pime makes some changes to that branch or commits another update, Pime's gonna, or Tim's going to have the opportunity to re-review the branch. Uh, he's not going to get a notification, but it is going to be visible in his reviews uh, panel in what's been assigned to him. All right, so I know that was a mouthful, and I know we're going a little bit over the budgeted time for this webinar, um, but I'm going to go ahead and take care of questions um, as they come up. It looks like there's two more that I need to cover. I'm going to check out the chat as well. Um, as far as things like inspect and asset downloads, we can't tie comments and feedback directly to inspect right now, but something we're thinking about in the background. Um, and I'm running another session that just goes strictly into inspect and handoff on the 20th, if you want to join that. In summary, collections pair really nicely with review requests. Great way to solicit feedback and share it out to the team. Right now, they need a seat with an abstract. In the future, we're working on public linking. Um, provide context for the reviewers in your branch and tie that feedback uh, in transparent decision making directly to the file uh, using abstract. So I'll go ahead and use that as like my signing off and go ahead and jump into some questions here. 
So Warren asks, is there an ability to export assets from the inspect view still on the roadmap? Yes. So if I go into one of these artboards here, I think I made these exportable. Slick. All right, cool. So can touch about this a little, talk about this a little bit, but assets is something that's coming. Viewers or contributors are going to be able to download assets from the Mac of the web app. What's great about collections as well is that when we're sharing out a set of screens and we're actually giving these screens to somebody else as a stakeholder with an abstract, we can access inspect directly through that collection. So just another more powerful way to use collections as a way to drive focus instead of saying like, here's a file, there's 150 artboards in it, I need you to pay attention to these three. Um, so that's going to help out quite a bit, I think, with how we collaborate with engineers, how we're passing them a set of screens to be able to asset, uh, download assets from as well as inspect. So pairs really nicely with review requests. I see a lot of teams adding PMs, engineers, stakeholders to be reviewers on the branch. Um, so they're able to follow along with the updates, approve and request changes, access the collection, as well as the measurements and specifications and very shortly assets that they need. So, um, Thanks for, thanks for the enthusiasm, Zachary. Really appreciate it. All right. And uh, good question. Thanks for bringing that up, Warren. Joshua Rudd asks, are reviewers' annotations included with their review, or do they only have global review response box tied to the review? Um, right now, what's tied to the review is just that branch level response box. Um, the, collection, the comments and annotations are tied specifically to those layers. Um, they populate in the activity feed, but that review box is really for high level branch feedback as opposed to specific feedback on an art border layer. Um, we'd love to hear some feedback on that. And <laughs> I'm using the word feedback a ton in the session, more than I thought I would. Um, but if that is something that you want to see, maybe we're reviewing specific elements, or it kind of sounds like marking a comment as resolved or responded to might help out with that situation as well, Joshua. But uh, feel free to give us a shout. Um, we're paying attention pretty closely to the feature request section of uh, Spectrum. All right. Is there a webinar case study around branching strategies? Not today. Maybe that's something that we can do in the future. Um, definitely open to it. So if there are things like within this webinar or other things that you want to see, you can shout me out on Twitter so that I can make it a priority and we can put some effort behind it in terms of building the content uh, that we need. So this was actually the first new webinar that we've done in a little bit. Um, typically do that one-on-one -on -one, as well as a link libraries and design systems webinar. Um, those are both about an hour. We run those recurringly. So looking for more ways to expand these sessions because we've actually had a really good response to them, um, which is awesome. So. If you have suggestions, give me a shout on Twitter, uh, and then I can service it to the team and prioritize it. But all right, if there's any other questions, um, happy to answer them. If not, I'm going to go ahead and sign off before I run right into my next meeting. But I'm just going to take a look at the chat really quick. I am using an internal beta, so things are a little bit different. Um, the folks that are still hanging out, maybe we can, I get to test and break everything ahead of time, but um, thanks everybody that joins. I'm going to go ahead and, and sign off. I don't think there's anything in the chat that I missed. Um, sharing a branch of collection with engineers is sometimes difficult. Add them as reviewers, they'll get a notification being brought directly to the branch overview. Um, we're starting to throw around a bunch of links. That's typically the point where things get a little bit confusing, but if they're reviewers on that branch, just want to make sure that I mentioned this, uh, Juno. They'll be able to manage all the reviews that are assigned to them or just the ones that are specifically part of a project. Um, this is a great area that I don't see a lot of stakeholders taking advantage of. Um, definitely something to surface and bring up with them. So, Adding them as a reviewer instead of sending them a bunch of different links for specific layers or specific collections. Really nice way to have that, that overview for those folks. So um, try it out. Let me know what you think and how it works. All right. Thanks, everybody. Um, looking forward to seeing you all again on the 20th. And we can talk a little bit more about 
assets, inspect where we're headed, how to mark something as exportable, how to make it exportable with an abstract, how to generate those assets, how to access them to stakeholders. So that's happening on the 20th, immediately following the, the release of, uh, of assets. So um, see you all soon. And yeah, thanks for hanging out. Bye. All right.